Hey guys, so as we mentioned um, in the video that was introducing this set of videos, we're going to be spending a lot of time in the beginning just focusing on what is a hypothesis test in general. So even though we don't have a lot of practice problems, once we get into the practical portion of this vi these videos, we're going to start applying some of these things and I'm going to bring them back in. So let's just make sure we get the basics down as we move further into uh, hypothesis testing. So let's go ahead and get started. So the purpose of the hypothesis test is to make a claim about a parameter. And so remember, parameters are based on populations, right? So the two that we've been working with recently have just been the mean, right, or mu. So here we have the mean. And for p, which is proportions, right? And so again, these are things we've seen in the last set of videos, which is sampling distributions in general, right? So. There's also always going to be two hypotheses. So we're going to have our null hypothesis. And I know it's going to be a lot of information. Just try and absorb it for now. We're going to do a lot of practice problems for us to kind of drive home these concepts. But I'd rather talk about this now as opposed to as we're going. So we have a null hypothesis, which is essentially kind of like a status quo. So it's kind of like what people in general think um, is supposed to be happening with this relationship. And I'm talking about very in general because we're going to be doing hypothesis tests for a bunch of different things. Um, so just in general, the null hypothesis is kind of like a status quo. Either that it's equal to what we thought it was before, um, equal to whatever we claimed it to be initially, or that nothing really special is happening. And so again, a lot of just very general talking about the null hypothesis. We're going to apply these things in a little bit. The alternative hypothesis is now what we're testing. So in general, it's, it's tend to um, be noted as basically the opposite of the null hypothesis. And the reason for that is because this one now is saying like, here's the status quo and here's this, if we assume that, you know, for example, the average height of people is 70 inches. If we just assume that and wanted to test to see if it's now changed a little bit or something different, greater than, less than, for whatever reason, that's going to be our alternative hypothesis. It's kind of the one that tells us that maybe something has changed a little bit since we last measured it, since we last assumed um, what it was. So since the null is the status quo, it's something that has already been established or the way that things are thought to be. So we reject or fail to reject this null hypothesis based on evidence from a sample. So why do we say reject and fail to reject? It sounds kind of backwards. Why don't you just say reject or accept, right? So you can't just accept the null hypothesis because the null can never really be proved, we can only disprove it. So what I mean by that is, as much evidence as we can get for supporting, for example, let's just get into the bigger idea of just theories, right? There's a theory, you can get a lot of support for it, but there could be that one experiment that someone runs and they reject your theory, right? So as much support as you can have for a null hypothesis, at the end of the day, you can only really just disprove it. You can't ever prove that this is exactly how it works because it could just be that Whatever you're testing, whatever the differences that you're looking at, you're just not focusing on something that really could make an influence on what you're looking at. So again, just in general, you can put a lot of support for a null hypothesis, but you can't ever say that it's right. Okay, just let that simmer for a little bit. <laughs> if we find a sample with results far enough from what the null said it should be, we can reject it. So now going back to this kind of concept of um, average heights, right? So if it's established that the average height is some number, and we find a sample that's so far off on one end or so far off on the other end, it kind of gives us evidence to say that maybe that average height has changed a little bit. Does that make sense? And so let's go ahead and move on to this just basic example, just kind of giving us a general idea of what a hypothesis test is. So assume that there's reason to question the established average height of people in the world. So maybe increased pollution, smog, I don't know, like hormones in our food, so people think we're bigger. Whatever the case may be, the null is that the average height is what it was established to be. So like maybe 20 years ago there was a census or something and they established that the average height of people in the United States is 70 inches. Now our alternate, our alternative in this case is that it's not 510. So maybe we'll find some evidence um, as you're, you know, if you ever do your own research or as we move on to problems here, it may just be we're focusing on if it's greater than or less than, but in this case we're saying that it's not 510 at all. So we don't know if it's bigger, way bigger, or way less than this. Now, if the null was really true, we would expect some variability in any sample average 
we might collect, right? So remember with our sampling distributions, there's always some variability. It's not that the population mean is the sampling distribution mean, right? So maybe it could happen by chance, but our sampling distribution still is a distribution. And so there's probability, there's variability, but in general, we see that um, most samples are gonna have an average of 70. There's gonna be some extreme cases on one side and some extreme cases on the other, but in general, most people should be right there around 70 inches. Does that make sense? So, however, there is a certain point where the average is too far off. So, how do we kind of get that cutoff point? Because how do we know when it's like too far off for us to say that maybe the height, average height has changed a little bit, right? And so, the way we do that is um, we, we set this cutoff point based on a probability, but we're gonna get to the probability now. In general, we find this critical value And I'm just going to say CV for now, which they tend to be a T statistic or a Z. And we're going to see other versions of this later on. So I'm going to just leave it at T and Z. Um, but yeah, we do have critical values that are set so that we know that kind of if it's past this point or past the other point, then that means my sample was really far off from the null, right? So again, the null kind of tells us where everything should be. If we have samples that are really far off from that, that means our null is probably not true. And therefore, we have evidence to reject the null hypothesis. Cool. So here's our critical value. And so here's the positive one, right? And we also have a negative one in this case. Again, this is just a basic example. We're going to go into specifics about like when is it negative or when is it positive, but just a general idea. So referring back to the hypothesis test we kind of mentioned above, we alluded to this general idea that like maybe the average height is 70 inches, maybe it isn't. Whoa, get crazy. Um, so assume the critical value for our test um, is 2.33 and the test statistic from the sample collected was negative 2.92. So what does this all mean? So here I'm just going to say we're in Z world. Actually, let's go ahead and put X and Z. So my null says that the average should be 70 inches, right? And how did I get 70? Because 510 is 5 feet is 12 inches for every foot. So we get 60 inches plus another 10 inches to make it 70. So that's kind of how we got that. So our average is 70. What is the Z score for this average? In Z world, if the null is true, then that score of 70 should have a Z score of zero, right? So kind of going back to the notion that Z score is the number of standard deviations away, right? So if it's right in the middle, it's no standard deviations away, therefore it gets a zero. Now, it tells us that our critical values for this are 2.33. So what does that mean? Since we're looking at whether it's changed a little lower or it's a little higher, we're going to look at 2.33, positive and negative. So we have two cutoff scores here. And now, our test statistic from our sample, so here's kind of like, here's our cutoffs, and then what did we find in our sample is where this thing falls. So our sample ended up being 2.92, negative. So we're over here. Right? So if we said that our cutoffs were this negative 2.33 and 2.33, so at these points it's basically like, yeah, there's some variability around 70 and that's okay if we get it inside of there. But if we're out here at these edges or anywhere further, that means our sample is so far off from what our null says it should be that we can reject it. Does that make sense? So here 2.92 is way far left. So this is kind of telling us that maybe it's not 70 inches, it might actually be something a little less than that. Does that make sense? But in particular, we're not saying less than or greater than. Here we're saying just at all, is it any different? So here we do have support to say that at the end of the day, our null is wrong. Does that make sense? So is there enough evidence to assume that the average height of people worldwide has changed from the established height of 510? So here in this case, we would say reject the null hypothesis. That's our initial conclusion. And some professors may be asking you to provide a little more information. So outside of just rejecting the null hypothesis, what does this mean at the end of the day, right? So at the end of the day, if we rejected the null, we're saying that there's sufficient evidence to assume that average height has changed. Right? And so we're kind of saying there's support now for our alternate. Again, you can never say that one is really right, but you can reject one or the other. So here we're rejecting our null hypothesis and saying that, yeah, our null hypothesis is wrong, 
Um, so we found support for the alternate. So there is sufficient evidence for us to say that the average has changed. Cool? So that's kind of in general how hypothesis works. Of course, there's a lot of like, how did you get the test statistic? How do we get our critical values? That's all things we'll work with in a little bit. But in the meantime, again, just generally, what does a hypothesis test tell us? Um, and then now we're going to get to the nitty gritty of how this all works. We have another video just going over now types of errors that can happen when we're making these conclusions. Um, so let's go ahead and dive into our type 1 and type 2 errors.